one of our central ideas in calculus is that the area underneath the curve can be represented by an integral. And if we really broke out what an integral was, it was this limit of a sum of a whole bunch of little rectangles, which why it made sense that the area under the curve was going to be given by the integral. We, we effectively defined the integral in such a way that that was going to be true. But that basic idea, the, the idea of taking some geometric thing that we want to analyze and breaking it up as this sort of infinite sum or this sum with a limit as n goes to infinity at the front of it of a whole bunch of little things where the little things are something I can compute easily, in this case, rectangles. That basic idea, we're going to extend over the course of Calculus 2 and Calculus 3 to a bunch of different contexts. And the first new one beyond just the area under the curve is going to be the idea of arc length. So here what we're imagining is that we just have some curve that we have, and we want to know, well, how long is that curve? If I was walking along that curve, how far would I go? And that's a, a very sort of standard geometric problem we might want to solve. And calculus is going to allow us to solve that problem in a very analogous way, where that curve is going to be broken up as the sort of sum, or the, the sum as n goes to infinity, of a whole bunch of little line segments where we know the length of each of the little line segments. And there's a derivation of this, but, but putting that idea together, we're going to get a formula that looks like this. So if, if I have some curve expressed by a function, y equals f of x, and I have some domain where I'm considering it, x is bounded between an a and bounded between a b, then the length of that curve, or the arc length, is given by this integral of this, this weird thing here, this square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. So in this video, we're not going to derive that formula, although it has a very nice geometric derivation. Instead, we're going to just see how we can apply that formula to figure out the length of an arbitrary curve like this one. So here I've given us a curve. 9y squared is 2x plus 1, all cubed. And the first thing to note is that this curve is, is not a function. Indeed, this curve violates the vertical line test, that for one value of x, we have two different values for y. And ultimately, the fact that I have these two different values from y stems from the fact that I have this y squared over here. So both the positive and the negative value are allowed. But when I refer to a curve, I'm referring to something slightly more general than a function. A, a, a curve is just sort of some squiggle that I'm allowed to put down on the plane, whereas a, a function is something that has to satisfy the conditions of a function, namely it needs to be well defined, it needs to have for every x value there's only a single y value. But the formula for arc length, it isn't for general curves, it, it's only for functions. So when I've got a curve like this, I have to give some restrictions over here, 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3, and more importantly, y greater than 0. So the restriction that y is greater than 0 tells me that I am only on this portion of the curve. I'm ignoring the bottom portion. And if I am going to talk about just the top portion, which is going to turn out to be the positive root, then that is a function, and I can apply the formula that we had before. And then, if I, if I really wanted to figure out what the arc length of this total curve was, both the top and the bottom portions of it, then I could either just multiply by 2 by symmetry, or I could do this arc length formula twice, once for the top, and then again for the other function where I'd be taking the negative root to deal with the bottom half of this curve. So let me begin the problem by doing a little bit of algebra. I'm going to rearrange this and say that y squared is 2 ninths, x plus 1 cubed, and now I have to make a choice I'm going from a curve to a function here. I'm going to take the positive square root of 2 ninths x plus 1 to the power of 3 halves. So now I have a function, and I have chosen the positive root of it, and so this, this thing really is a function, and it satisfies the vertical line test. Now, I'll look back at my formula and, and recall that in, in my formula here, I have this derivative square. So I don't just want to compute oh, what y is f of x, I want to be able to compute its derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. I can say that 
y prime is going to be equal to, so if the constant comes out the front, the square root two ninths, I have a three halves coming down, and then it's going to be an x plus one to the power of one half. All right, so I'm going to take this, and on the next slide, I'm going to put it into my formula. So my arc length formula is going to be an integral from x equal to zero up to x equal to three. That's reading off my restriction on the domain that I have up here. Copying and pasting most of this, square root of one plus, and now comes a time where I have to put in the derivative squared. So I had that square root of two ninths, so squaring that becomes a two ninths. And then I had a factor of three halves that's going to get squared, and then an x plus one to the power of one half. So I have the nine fourths, that's the three halves squared, and then x plus one square rooted squared is going to look like that. So that's what I have up here. And maybe I'll just clean it up. Integral from 0 to 3 square root of the 9's are going to cancel. So 1 plus x plus 1 divided by 2 dx. At this point, it's just an integral. And so it's just a question of evaluating this integral. And in fact, for these types of arc length problems, often the most challenging part is doing the integral at the end. And it's just because of the structure of it, the square root of one plus the derivative squared thing often just leaves a messy integral. It's just sort of a complicated formula, so you often get complicated integrands out of it. But in this case, it's not so bad. It's just gonna be a u sub. And so I get some messy result like that.